Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gaming here, and today we're going to be talking about Power Creep, and this time we actually have historical data to back up what we say as well. 16,000 sample size, and these charts are all generated using Tableau. Uh, so take a take a back seat. Don't worry if you are like afraid of statistics and graphs and whatnot. Just chill. You can put it in the background. I'll tell you when there's something to look out in screen. I know some of you just like to listen to these videos while you're playing Honkai Star Rail in the background. So not to worry about that as well. And you know, we don't waste any time on these videos and our videos that we do on this channel. So let's jump right in. The best stonk or whatever character you want to talk about out of all of them is Bronya. But I think I put this slide first, not to like just blanket everything and saying this is the best and everyone should just pull this. Uh, I also want to use this to illustrate what data represents. If you notice the percentages that you see on the left side here, the graph is basically plotted on an appearance rate. So why so low at first? There's of course multiple factors, but one of them is not many people had Bronya early on. And as the time goes by, the more people get Bronya, they just played Bronya. So appearance rate is slightly different from usage rate. Uh, but of course, usage rates is much more difficult to plot, especially across time. Imagine the amount of data sets that you need to consider. Appearance rate is a lot easier because if you see it, you put it in the percentage. It's much more manageable for a big data kind of analysis from that point of view. Maybe when we all have a bit more uh, complexity, more budget to do all the analysis, maybe we will have a more sophisticated system. But for now, I just want to share with you that limitation. So it doesn't mean you see low appearance rate means they are bad. It could also mean that... Uh, not many people have them, especially some limited five stars, which we'll talk about in a bit. Those are some big caveats also, because if you are in a period where no people don't really have that much pools, the appearance rate might be slightly lower. But generally across the board, especially across time, you can see a nice trend analysis too. So that's for Bronya. Uh, another reason why she's so low at first is a lot of the characters in the very beginning of Honkai Star Rail, especially if you are a new player watching this, maybe you are looking to get a bit of more insights as well. Um, you tend to prioritize the sustained characters first and then later on move to your DPS characters. So at the very beginning, which we'll see later in the sustained category, all the very, very good supports like Fire MC and Natasha were very high in appearance rates, but slowly they diminished very, very quickly as sustain no longer became a huge factor because because we had a lot more resources, better gear and whatnot. But still, uh, out of all of the data sets I helped to like summarize, basically the one that did the best from start all the way to the end is Bronya. This is a massive gain. It went from like 40, 42, 43 percent and went up all the way to like, I don't know, 64, 65. That's a 50 percent jump more or less since the game started. Bronya is definitely the best. Um, will she be power crap or anything with Sparkle? Stay tuned on the channel to find out. We'll talk about it in a bit. Um, but let's talk about the next one, which is another solid performance from a four-star character this time. And that is, of course, Tingyun. If you look at her appearance rate from the start and the end of the game, whoever had her was playing her at the very beginning. And it pretty much didn't change across uh, all, of the, all of the way, actually, like from the start to now. Does that change with Ranmei? You can see this drop at the right at the end over here. You can see this slight down tick right here. Um, this is a Ranmei effect. Whether it's going to continue to play, we will only know once we do our analysis in a couple of moments. But I do think um, the more Harmony characters being added into the game, uh, Tingyun might be uh, inflicted by it a little bit. But still, a very solid performance considering that this is a 4-star character, meaning you don't have to spend your guaranteed pool on it. Uh, super shout out to Tingyun. Very, very strong character and still is till today. Another character I want to talk about now, uh, we've already like two Harmony Harmony characters. Another one that is super underrated, I felt, um, is Pella. And this is a character that if you look at the chart here, another huge shout out. When people started the game, they were like, why do we care about Pella? We are just going to run Harmony characters, increase the damage of our team. Who cares about defense breaking? No one gives a shit about that. Uh, but Pella defied the odds. As the game went by, she's also another Stonks character. I didn't put her higher than Bronya because technically the absolute is still less. She's like still under 60% appearance rate. But the pump, in which she went from a 25 to currently just under 50%. That's almost a double in appearance rates. Um, the main reason and another reason why I didn't put her as the top stonk is because she was largely driven here, this bump, by Ting Liu. In the background, you see, can see like a faded blue. This is when Ting Liu first came about um, into the game. That's why Pella also pumped together with her. And how Ting Liu does, Pella tends to move uh, in line. And I do think that this last drop here, this slight decrease, is due to the arrival of Ranmei because Ranmei was a pretty decent proxy if you're playing Ting Liu teams uh, instead of running Pella. So both Ting Yun as well as um, 
uh, Pella are affected by Ron May's appearance. Will it continue? I don't think so because ultimately Ron May is offering a very different kit compared to Pella. Pella is more of a defense shredder. Ron May is more of like a buffer type unit. So next up, um, we have an honorable mention. Now I wanted to also talk about some characters who are relatively low on appearance rate, but this is a character that is, is shocking. If you look at like the faded in the background, you are either very, very high up or totally obsolete, like disappear from appearance rate totally. And Clara or Clara, 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 however you pronounce it. I pronounce it as Clara. I don't have her on my account, but this is one character that I've said even at the start of the game when I was doing my initial tier list. I said that this is a character that will withstand the test of time and it's because of her unique playstyle. Um, she's a survivor in a crowded space. You have many DPSs and theoretically speaking, the more DPSs that come into the game, the lower the appearance rate of other DPS characters. Clara is so special because she's not only a DPS, she's also a tank aggro drawer with damage reduction. She, her mechanic is very interesting because it's a counter-based mechanic as well, making her relevant, as you can see, throughout the times and is probably the only source of AoE physical damage if you don't have Argenti. Uh, so she definitely saw some good value here. Started out at like 25% and now ending off roughly around like 20%. So it's not too bad considering that a lot of other DPSs, which we'll see in a little bit, have been contested very, very heavily. So these are some like honorable mentions that I want to talk about so far. And let's now go on to our first like big cluster. It's useful to see all of the charts in one, but I think once you break them down into like certain buckets like sustain, damage dealers and supports, that's when you're able to get a lot more analysis because that's where you tend to compete around your peers. You don't fight with like uh, people who are study engineering or IT uh, among each other. You will be looking at, if you study math, you're looking at your other math students and seeing how well you score so you can pit yourself against each other and whatnot. Um, that's why we are looking at it in buckets, which is much more insightful. So first things first, one big trend that we notice, if I uncover the start here, you can see characters that were very, very high in appearance rate tend to be free characters in general. So appearance rate is biased towards free characters. Everyone has them. So generally, when players don't have much options, you will gravitate towards the free options. And the good free options like Natasha, Fire MC, were what a lot of us started to play about. Uh, we'll talk about some interesting cases, which we'll talk about in these like red boxes in a bit. But then slowly as the game goes by, more people started to get other uh, characters in the game. You would see, for example, you can you see this like yellow spike up. This was like the arrival of Luota. And when Luota came about, of course, Natasha and Fire MC immediately noticed a very drastic dip because um, people gravitated towards the, the limited 5-star option who was just a lot better. Luota was much more efficient to play as well. Uh, you have other characters in the beginning of the game. For example, like Pai Lu here, who started out pretty decent. Of course, it's a limit. It's a standard 5-star which not many people had uh, at first. Of course, the data here might be skewed because maybe less people contributed to the data at the start and then as it goes by, more people started to like contribute to the data and stuff. So you might not get a perfect situation. So I just want to share with you the limitations of the data. So it's not as if 50% 50 people, 50 of people had Pailu, but rather uh, when the statistics were scattered, maybe only 50% contributed. So take it with a pinch of salt, what's important is the trend line, which is a bit more useful to see as well. Um, and that, that being said, so you started off with very strongly with Pailu. This chart here, the blue bar that started off really strong and then going cramping down real quick was actually March 7. So I think a lot of people, uh, the first person that they removed from their roster was tend to be March 7. Previously, people will be running like a Fire MC and March 7 Duo Com at the very beginning because you just needed that much sustain for both sides. Uh, the moment you had Luota, straight away, like people just slowly moved out or the moment they got Pai Lu, the moment they had better gear, the characters higher level, they didn't really feel a need to have like a double sustain with March 7 and Fire MC. So we see that in the trend pattern here. And then March 7 basically like went into nothingness in the memory of chaos. This is just memory of chaos, by the way. Not like considering like simulated universe, what else not. Doesn't mean they're bad characters, just that they don't really appear much in the MOC. Um, that is something that is used to talk about. The part here, of course, this higher blue line that we can see. And I really apologize for any of you colorblind folks. I try to make the pictures as close to the line as you can see. Unfortunately, there's no like X dot or a square block so we can distinguish them. Um, you have to just listen to as much narration as I can. I try my best to help out any one of you who are colorblind as well uh, in my videos too. So that are these like the initial beginning. Um, characters that are recently introduced. The last two lines here is Fu Xuan who has been... Don't look at the initial entry, entry dot because it tends to be like 
very skewed. Not many people maybe contributed the data later on than they started. So you look at the second dot after the character is introduced. So the initial spike doesn't really matter. And of course, this character here is Huo Huo, who is in this like green line over here. The two categories that I want to talk about is first this red box over here, the lower box over here that I, that I squared out. If you notice here, the lines of Natasha and Fire MC went drastically down here, similar to when Luo Ta came about. And Fu Shen, you can see when she appeared, immediately took a high appearance rate. So you can tell that any of the players who had Natasha and Fire MC and still playing them, and they got Fu Shen, they immediately swapped Natasha or Fire MC or both out for a character like Fu Shen. And this trend is very, very uh, predominant, especially in the sustain categories, which we'll talk about in a bit. So Natasha Fire MC, very affected by this trend. You can see from the drastic drops whenever a new sustain character is introduced. Whereas uh, you look at the other category here, you can see when Fu Shen was introduced, Luo Ta didn't actually drop at all. So Luo Ta kind of maintained his standing. And then you fast forward, you look at Ho Ho's appearance. You can see that when Ho Ho appeared, Fire MC as well as Natasha dropped even more again. You can see that like whoever else didn't have these two characters swap over to Ho Ho and now it's like they have a limited 5 star so they swap to that instead. And if you look on the flip side, uh, Ho Ho's appearance didn't really affect uh, Luo Ta, Fu Shen too much. It was a slight decrease but not very very noticeable especially from the rest. And that is why broadly speaking, I can say that the runners in the sustain category tend to be very, very consistent. If you do well in the sustain category, uh, even though a new character come up, you might not kick out the other person. Ultimately, it's a pretty crowded space. You could only have like two or three at most. Um, but you look at this long red box here that I squared, you can see the consistency of Luo Ta. You can see the consistency of Fu Shen. And you can see, for example, Ho Ho has a bit of consistency so far. Not many data sets, but already three that shows you pretty stable. Um, for this sustain category, which comes to my overall like conclusion. The sustain category is extremely lopsided. Once you get a very nice character, a 5-star limited, you will gravitate towards them immediately and you'll dump off your previous ones. Uh, utility generally survives longer in this game because if you have clans like uh, Ho Ho, you have Luo Ta, very useful, you can do more, you have maybe some sort of buffing here and there, you likely will have a, a lot higher longevity. Fu Shen, for example, even though she doesn't outright cleanse, she does resist one instance of CC, um, but it's her overall you, you usable kit that makes her really stand out from the crowd being like such a high performer. And one thing that I want to say, of course, is previously, um, she was the only character that I actually mentioned that is ridiculously overpowered in the game. I hardly, and I think I've never ever said this word uh, in most of the games that I've covered so far and how long this YouTube channel has been alive. Uh, but you can see here that what we said right here is true. There was this horizontal movement in Fu Shen's appearance rate. And I've not said this about any other character uh, thus far in the game, if any of you who are wondering uh, we tend to do these videos from time to time, so I like to think that I give uh, pretty decent recommendations here based on the performance, based on history and how the calls have performed too. That is for the sustain category. Let's talk about the flashy one. Everyone likes this part, right? The damage dealers, so exciting. Uh, one thing to say, damage dealers, I just want to give a very blanket statement, is very difficult to fight in this category because it's the easiest category to sell for the company to make money, Mihoyo, Hoyoverse to make money. You sell a flashy DPS doing 10 million damage, way easier to sell than a character who blocks 10 million damage. Uh, just, just simple how the world works in a sense. So naturally, most characters in this category would feel some sort of pressure, downward pressure as time goes on. There is a neutral uh, 10, what I think that they will tend towards and gravitate towards a certain percentage. And I'll explain why they won't go all the way to zero in a little bit uh, as time tends to infinity. But let's just take a look at this chart so we can figure out and understand how power creep has affected the whole game so we can also plan and take this information to decide on future DPS characters that we want to get how to have longevity. First thing, of course, let's start off with the two initial DPSs here. You have this high, very, very high chart here, Zila right at the top. You have Jing Yuan, who was a lightning DPS also uh, at a approximately around 50% rate. Very stable. Jing Yuan's first few appearances were very stable. I do think in, uh, it's due to the fact that uh, the community was giving him a lot of pressure, a lot of hate. So the people that were using Jing Yuan were very, very loyal supporters of him. They loved using him a lot and they stood by that logic. There was a huge controversy back then when the game first come, came out. 
uh, full of controversies throughout the history so far. But anyways, Zilla, you can see, she dropped very, very significantly the moment a new DPS came about, like Blade. Once Blade was introduced, boom, you have this huge drastic drop in Zilla. And then uh, she dropped again in this spike down when, for example, another new character came up about like Jing Liu. This was uh, Jing Liu's appearance here. Any of you who are wondering this, why is this chart such an outlier? This is the Jing Liu chart here. Once she came about, Zilla dropped and she dropped again during like uh, when Blade first arrived. One interesting fact, of course, is that in Bible to Lune's appearance actually helped Zilla increase together in tandem, which is very, very interesting. Uh, back then, when Imbibitor Lune came out, it was a double hyper carry strat. People were playing Imbibitor Lune on one side and Zilla on the other side, and that was a very, very popular team. So one of the rare cases where your I, I would say like if you're if you're the highest in appearance rate, you are the pack runner, you're like the favorite of everyone. Back then in like version 1.3 when Imbibitor Lune first came about, a new DPS came about, but the front runner actually improved in appearance rate together with the new DPS, which is very rare. Like it's um quite uh, I guess it's a short-term phenomenon, but then later on, she had this like gradual decline here. And currently, as of like time of recording, she's like the second most highest appeared DPS in the game. Uh, Zilla, even though starting out for her first, did maintain her stance quite well, but definitely you can see the effects of uh, new DPSs coming into the game, power creep, blah, 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 all coming into play. Ting Yuan, on the other hand, also witnessed similar fashions, but his, his damage or his decrease actually came from elemental typing if you notice like blade coming into the game look at where i'm circling on the, the the screen right now and any of you who are like having it back and reverse i just want you to pay attention to this phenomenon right real quick if you look at this when blade came about zilla had this drastic drop Ting Yuan didn't give a shit it's more or less the same but the big drop actually came from kafka's appearance in the game and this spike here, this uh, appearance is by Kafka being introduced in the game in like 1.2 second half. That's when we actually saw that Ting Yuan's value decrease. Which means, and this is kind of like telling us uh, a huge important key fact about DPSs. There is a tendency for DPSs to compete within the same elements much more than across the board of other elemental typings. And up till today, if you guys count, the only DPSs that we have of the same element, like limited five stars, is the lightning category where Jing Yuan and Kafka are the only exceptions. The rest of them, if you look, all of them only have one, one single one. Argenti in physical, you have Topaz and Nambi in fire, you have um, Zilla in quantum, you have Jing Liu in ice, you have Imbibited Lune in uh, imaginary, and uh, Blade in wind as well. So everyone is fair, except for lightning, and this is the first data point that I really want a lot of us to consider. If you like a DPS character, always ask yourself, is another one that you like on the horizon that is of the same element? If that's the case, you will likely be affected by this phenomenon very, very drastically too. Um, but yeah, so you can see very nice trend. And if you notice here, I don't know any of you, maybe quicker at graphs, but if you're not, not to worry, I want to point it out. There is a tendency for most characters to tend towards a certain point. You could argue that it's the number of limited characters that are in the game divided by the number of DPS required. So you get a, like a percentage or the number of DPS required divided by the number of uh, limited DPSs in the game. So for example, if there are like 10 DPSs, you have only two need. Theoretically, everyone should tend to 20%. Um, that is like the theoretical, right? But I would say that like elemental DPSs generally will form a stable base. The front runner will always be one elemental DPS of either single target or AOE, depending on the nature of the comp. Uh, and that's every everyone else is when Pell Creep does come in. If you're of the same typing and you are a DPS, you can't, you, you don't slot in like a dual DPS, uh, then you will be very exposed to that. Ting Liu, of course, is another outlier that I want to talk about real quick. If you notice here, she is the only one that has withstood like the logic of DPSs resisting, other than Ting Yuan, of course, at the very beginning. Uh, Ting Liu here, very strong showing so far. She got even better with the arrival of Ron Mei, uh, and who knows, maybe she'll get even stronger. I'm not too sure whether, whether Acheron coming into the picture will change things for her, but that is a very key question to ask. Will Acheron inflict more damage on Zealous performance, or is she actually a competitor to Ting Liu? Or maybe with Akron's arrival, she will actually see a similar spike together with how Imbibitor Lune came about and both Zilla and Imbibitor Lune had happy days. We don't know. We can only predict. And that's why we always do our prediction investment videos. You can see on the channel whenever we talk about predicting future trends. Uh, I like to say that we point out a lot of these trends already in a lot of our past videos. This is just like evidence stating the fact. 
But yeah, basically I want to summarize it into three parts for damage dealers for any of you who are like watching this in the background. One is a very crowded space. Don't feel bad if like your DPS generally lowers in value. You can see based on history that everyone has a drop in value over time and it's a natural phenomenon. Elements do matter a lot. If your DPS is the same element as uh, upcoming DPS, you can expect some competition in that field. So it's a natural phenomenon. That's when power creep actually happens for DPSs. Uh, and really, the honest truth is it's very hard to go wrong. So while we saw like all these like numbers of charts going down, the truth is you could pretty much plug and play most of the limited 5-star DPSs and they will more or less be okay. Even though appearance rate doesn't mean who is like the meta and like the best to clear, obviously Ting Liu is like the meta flavor right now. But people using them still shows that they are not completely useless. You might not get full stars, but at least you will get some form of cashback across a period of time. If you like them, you can't really go wrong. And I think that's the biggest lesson to take away for damage dealers. Might be crowded, might be competitive, a lot of power creep, but really hard to go wrong. Uh, there's really no mistake. And maybe just want to add in one more. Let's do an honorable mention to Topaz and Numbi and Argenti. You might notice that their lines here are very low. This red line here, I didn't put the picture up and Argenti here is very low. One of the reasons why they are very low here, this is the exception, is they arrived at a time that is one either going into a very meta character like Ranmei, uh, Panakani coming up, for example, in the case of Argenti, or Jing Liu just came about and Topaz and Nambi was like directly after that. So people pulled for the meta uh, favorite character and Topaz and Nambi naturally might not have that much resources people put on uh, instead. So that is like something to point out. Appearance rate is not always representative of how good a character is. But I can say like case in point, maybe Argenti deserve a slightly higher rating, but this is the memory of chaos. So uh, we have other conversations on pure fiction already where he's much better at. So I just want to give that quick shout out for any of you uh, there too. The last category. This is the category that is the, if you were an investor, you want the best bang for your buck. Tendency, this is the best category to put your money in. If you look at Ting Yun's chart here from left all the way to right, you more or less can plot like a straight line if you like do an average of all of them across at 70%. Very high usage rate. A character, for example, in this this second line here together with like Ting Yun at the very beginning, this was Silver Wolf's appearance. You can see that even though she has dropped, uh, she's still very, very useful. But this is just like the Silver Wolf effect. As you have more characters, implanting weaknesses doesn't matter as much. We talked about them when right before the game even launched. I already explained that this is a natural phenomenon for Silver Wolf because her kit helps players that are new to the game. When you, as time goes by and you have more and more characters, this natural downward trend happens to Silver Wolf. Whereas for characters like uh, Pella, who is like a defense breaker in the same category, you can see a spike and naturally a horizontal line. Like if before even that spike, she was like horizontal slightly higher and here also like horizontal more or less now as well. Um, the only exception with the arrival of Ronmi, of course, a bit more competition is filled. That's why some of them are dipping towards the, the right at the end. And I just want to like give a quick shout out to myself as well for, I actually pointed this out, like one of the top picks that I had, this was way back then, wherever I was still using this old format. We actually mentioned that Pella was one of our top picks as value over the long term. And true enough, like we talked about it somewhere in the start here, 1.1, 1 .1, uh, good units to build. I think it's somewhere on the channel. And these units here, are of course, uh, one of the top performers still. Pella here did actually became one of the highest gainers in the entire game, almost doubling her appearance rate, even though she's a four-star character. So it's not limited by banners, uh, limited banners, five-star banners and stuff like that. So just want to do a quick uh, commentary on that. Bronya here, naturally, as more people got her, they just fit her in. The only time that she really had a decrease was uh, here, this point here when Bronya is first being introduced. Um, other than that, not too much as well. And I think this part here is the only other time Bronya did when you was it Yukong? I'm not too sure who is this uh, imaginary support. It might be Welt. This one might be Welt here. So Welt had an increase slightly. It might be one that um, required you to debuff enemies. I remember clearly there was a debuff meta. Maybe it's like 1.3 or, or, or something like that. Or when Imbibe to Lune first came into the game, probably maybe Bronya dipped a bit because Bronya doesn't work with Imbibe to Lune. I think there was like some time in 1.3. Now that memory comes back to me. Uh, other than that, of course, you have Asta here, who is a free character that has been relatively consistent across time. Um, didn't really dip too much, but didn't also um, increase by a tremendous amount. But you can see utility sub DPS. This category is always a pretty good amount of bang for your buck. You don't really need a limited 5-star in this category either because the free options like um, Tingyun, Pella, 
uh, Esther and to some extent I'll say Bronya is free because you can get her from the standard banner are all very very stable options so I would say even though you get good bang for your buck this is probably the category that you probably don't have to pull for if you don't want to uh, since all the free options have good alternatives too uh, that is something that I want to point out in terms of like power creep and whatnot. so the next chart I know it's a lot of mouthful and if you are gaining like value in this video so far, it's a very new format because it's the first time we have so much historic data right now in like 2.0. If you like it, like and subscribe for more such future content. Leave me a comment below as well so that I know whether to do more of these. If you guys appreciate such analysis, I would like to do more in future too. Otherwise, we will have a lot of other content on the channel too. Um, limited 5 stars, these are basically telling you if you spent money on that banner, how did that judgment perform over time so right now if you fast forward like back then until now if you spend any of your resources the top characters in terms of uh, people using them Fu Shen is number one in terms of appearance rate Jing Liu is number two you have Ron Mei but it's like only one data point so I didn't bother putting it in you have Luo Ta who is very very popular Silver Wolf Huo Huo and then all the DPSs are more or less like comp below. So you can see if you pull the sustained characters, you are much better off like Fu Shen and Luo Ta. If you were super lucky and you you pulled on Jing Liu, for example, maybe you thought she was a waifu, you loved her design, you pulled her, um, you, you you hit the lottery, she was the best, she's the best DPS currently in the game and is relatively stable as well. Uh, the question of course that we ask ourselves on this channel is who else will be the next lottery DPS which will have the Jing Liu effect because there will be another one coming or maybe but uh, our job is to actually find out and recommend to you guys what I think is good values that we'll see like Fu Shen when I said she was really good you see this horizontal chart the other character that I have speak very highly of is Ron Mei um, you guys can uh, come back to this video in like six months time this is just one dot now but I think Ron Mei is going to withstand the test of time I think she'll be a very very stable performer or so not as overpowered as Fu Shen I think still pretty good nonetheless but um, you can see out of all of these characters in the game three of them are sustained characters who are the front pack runners um, and the rest of them are Jing Liu who is um, lottery DPS out of all of them she's the best so and the rest of them are like more or less clustered Silver Wolf is of course a very very good pick she was our top pick coming into official launch for the reasons mentioned if you're a new player I think Silver Wolf is like tons of value as well uh, but yeah and if you are guys are interested, this is just the memory of chaos. We need to factor in, in order to think whether characters are good or not, we need to consider pure fiction. In that case, I do recommend you check out this video here, where we look at the usage rate instead of all the characters in both memory of chaos, pure fiction, put them together and give you a recommendation as well. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching again and see you in the next video.